O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We come before your presence. You who are common to us all. God in the midst, come close to us and help us to come close to you. As for a fraction of time, we step back from the activities and demands of the day. So if, as this day goes on, we forget you, do not forget us, O God. Amen. Holy wisdom, delight of our God, you open our ears, we hear your word. You enter deep into the being of humanity. Foolish to the world, you unmask our follies. You are a shelter to us by day and a steady flame through the night. You lead us through turbulent waters and bring us safe to dry ground. You open the mouths of those who are mute. You loosen the tongues of infants in their cries. A little child takes us by the hand and leads us to the freedom and truth. Holy wisdom, delight of our God, you open our ears, we hear your word. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 84 How lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord of hosts, to me! My soul is longing and fainting, the courts of the Lord to see. My heart and flesh they are singing for joy to the living God. How lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord of hosts to me. Even the sparrow finds a home where he can settle down, and the swallow she can build a nest where she may lay her young. Within the courts of the Lord of hosts, my King, my Lord and my God, and happy are those who are dwelling where the song of praise is sung. And I'd rather be a doorkeeper and only stay a day than live the life of a sinner and have to stay away. For the Lord is shining as the sun, and the Lord he's like a shield, and no good thing does he withhold from those who walk his way. Let us pray. Spirit of wisdom, take from us all fuss, the clattering of noise, the temptation to dominate by the power of words, the craving for certainty. Lead us through the narrow gate of not knowing that we may listen and obey and come to a place of silence and stillness, of true conversation and wisdom. Amen. Now we sit and listen to a reflection by Canon Bruce. Today I went on a bus for the first time in 18 weeks. A bus, as every schoolboy knows, is really an omnibus, a Latin word meaning for everybody. The equivalent word in Greek is katholikos, that is Catholic. So in the creed, when we say we believe in the Catholic Church, we are describing a universal faith, good news for everyone, regardless of age, gender, race, or nationality. And that was the first element of the Jesus revolution that I spoke about last Saturday. A second aspect of this revolution is about how God shows himself to us. I call this O oh, taste and see, which is a phrase from Psalm 34. The full verse is, O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. This second part of the Jesus revolution is simply that God has revealed himself through a human being whom people could see and hear and touch and talk to. The Jews already believed that God speaks directly to men as God spoke to Abraham and Moses. But it was all very remote, surrounded in awe and mystery. When Moses was on Mount Sinai, there was smoke, fire and thunder. The people were told not to touch even the foot of the mountain or they would die. 
To the Jews of Jesus' day, God was utterly holy, and contact with him was through the high priest entering the Holy of Holies in the Jerusalem temple. But then Jesus was born, a baby, who needed to be fed, washed, and changed like any other baby, who grew up to be a boy and a young man, well known to everyone in Nazareth. There was no fire or smoke, no awe, no fear of touching him. As an adult man, he was adored by some and despised by others. He was all too real. In the first epistle of St. John, we find this fully stated. That which has existed since the beginning, that we have heard and seen with our own eyes, that we have watched and touched with our hands, the eternal life which was with the Father has been made visible to us. Yes, God was truly present in Jesus, Emmanuel, God among us. This was, of course, a great scandal to the Jews. The very thought that Jesus of Nazareth claimed to embody the glory and the majesty of God was sheer blasphemy. When Jesus forgave the sins of the paralytic man, or when he said things like, He who has seen me has seen the Father, they were outraged. Some said he was evil, some said that he was mad. Even some of his disciples went through agonies of doubt and uncertainty until they'd seen him put to death on the cross and then witnessed him alive among them a few days later. Only slowly did they come to accept fully the staggering truth that Jesus was not just a godly man, but that he was, and is, God, though utterly human. And this is why so many aspects of Christianity involve ordinary things, everyday things. We are brought into a new relationship with God, simply using water in baptism. We are confirmed in our faith, simply by the hands of a bishop laid, hand, laid upon us. We are nourished and strengthened in our faith, just by eating bread and drinking wine. All these involve our hands, our eyes, our ears, our lips, our mouths. The Christian faith is essentially material, concerned not just with things like incense and fine music and ancient prayers and spiritual reading, but with our whole being, our bodies, minds and spirits, our family life, our relationships, our hopes and fears, our pain and our joy. It also includes, of course, basic issues of freedom, justice and compassion, both in our society and in the wider world. Only when we recognize how our faith embraces this vast sweep of human concerns can we truly and meaningfully pray, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And having heard Canon Bruce, let us now pray. Throughout this day, enliven our minds, inspire our conversation, inform our decisions and protect those whom we love. And should today bring that we neither anticipate nor desire, increase our faith and decrease our pride, until we know that when we face the unexpected, we do not stand alone. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Lord and Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us share with one another the grace of Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.